In the Com states, 100 people have been fatally shot by security forces since January. 100 people have been fatally shot by members of the security forces since the start of the year. Two separate incidents in St. Catherine and Hanover resulted in the latest fatalities. The deceased have not been identified. Their deaths also pushed the tally for August to 10. Meantime, Assistant Commissioner of the Independent Commission of Investigations in the Com, Amish Campbell, said a triple fatal and a double fatal shooting incident have also been recorded so far this month. He said in comparison to last year, fatal shootings have increased as 2023 recorded its 100th fatal shooting in mid-September. Meantime, in the Commerce Express concern about a noticeable increase in planned police operations this year, Mr. Campbell said up to the end of July, 34 people were shot and killed during 29 planned police operations. He noted that for the entire 2023, there were 23 recorded planned police operations resulted in 24 deaths. Assistant Commissioner Campbell said given that these operations are planned, but one cameras must be worn by officers. The last person in St. Catherine, that was the 100th person who's been fatally shot by the security services, primarily the JCF, for the first six months of this year. That makes 90 in total for the first six months. Last year, for that same period, there were 79 people who were shot and killed. So there's a 14% increase over last year. And already in August, the 8th of August, further 10 people have now been fatally wounded. We've noticed that the increase in fatal shootings, a significant proportion of those, some 38% of the persons killed, arose from planned police operations, as opposed to spontaneous events where police officers are in encounter or confronted by gunmen in their operational duties. These are planned operations for which we expect a higher level of planning, preparation, and risk assessment. But nevertheless, 34 people have been shot and killed during the current planned operations. None of those planned operations with any officer wearing body-worn cameras, despite the growing number of body-worn cameras which are being made available to the JCF. And this would provide accountability and transparency, where many of these planned operations are met with a contradiction by civilians and other witnesses in the premises or outside as to what has occurred. So the numbers have increased. When planned policing operations were not as high as this in the recent past, but we have seen this significant increase and with it accompanying number of more people are being killed. Curfew imposed in sections of Green Island Hanover. A 48-hour curfew have been imposed in sections of Green Island Hanover. The curfew began at 6 p.m. and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Saturday, August 10. The boundaries of the curfew are north at Orange Bay Square along the highway to the small bridge beside Lumpster Smokehouse, east along an imaginary line from the small bridge beside Lumpster Smokehouse to Marchstone Square, south from Marchstone Road along an imaginary line through Dam Road area to the entrance of Dam Road, west from the entrance to Dam Road District along the main road, to Orange Bay Square. During the hours of the curfew, all persons within its boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized by the Guam Commando. Denham Town woman charged after alleged butter attack during argument. A woman was charged on Wednesday for allegedly breaking a butter and using it to cut another woman during an altercation on Bread Lane in Denham Town, West Kingston. Charged with unlawful wounding is 42 year old Janice Gibson a self-employed resident of Pierre Street in Denham Town. According to reports, about 8.05 p.m., an argument broke out between the complainant and a man. During the dispute, Gibson allegedly intervened, broke a bottle and used it to cut the complainant's right arm, causing a wound that bled. A report was made to the Denham Town Police Station, and following investigations, Gibson was taken into custody. She was subsequently charged based on an eyewitness statement. 60-year-old fined $300,000 for land and passport application. A defense attorney's argument that even good people make mistakes was not enough to keep his 60-year-old client from being stopped with a hefty penalty when she appeared before the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday. 
Patsy Hood was fined three hundred thousand dollars for presenting false information on her passport application after pleaded guilty to making a false declaration. According to the court documents on February 12, 2003, Patsy went to the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency and declared on the application form that her name was Shireen and Marie Lindo in order to obtain a passport. She received the document on February 24. The court was also told that Patsy was removed from a flight earlier this year, but it was not made clear whether her removal was connected to the fictitious passport. In his mitigation plea, Defense Attorney Henry McCord pointed out to the judge that his client has never used a passport and emphasized that even good people are prone to making mistakes. In passing the sentence, Judge Fleckler Hilton ordered that the defendant to pay a fine or spend three months in jail. Nurse of the Year to Assist Treasure Beach Students Impacted by Hurricane The 2024-2025 Nurse of the Year, Abigail James, will be providing back-to-school supply for students from her Treasure Beach community in St. Elizabeth who have been affected by Hurricane Beryl. My project for this year was support for the Las Catrin Foundation and the Nurses Association of Jamaica NAG is to give back to the children of Treasure Beach whose families have suffered tremendous loss, she stated. Nurse James noted that initially she had intended to take on another project but given the disruption caused by the hurricane, particularly in St. Elizabeth, she wanted to assist those impacted as best as possible. She said that she is committed to serve and intends to use her Nurse of the Year platform to uplift others. To be able to be there for somebody when they can't be there for themselves, it is a wonderful feeling, she noted. Nurse James said that the Nurse of the Year title is a big deal for the Black River Hospital where she works. Noting that it is the first time that a team member from the hospital was winning the Covert Award, she said the recognition speaks to the dedicated service that the health facility provides. Lord and Nurse James, Regional Director of the Southern Regional Health Authority, Michael Bent, said it is appropriate that her project is focusing on helping children from her community, noting that we fully endorse it. He commended first runner up in the Nurse of the Year competition, Rochelle Mendez, and second runner up, Davia Dyer, from the Mandeville Regional Hospital in Manchester. We are very proud of these ladies, and it is a very proud moment for the region, Ben stated. Chief Executive Officer at the Mandeville Regional Hospital, Alwyn Miller, said that the nurses are passionate about what they do. We are thankful that these ladies are such standard bearers, he noted. The Nurse of the Year program recognizes pay setters within the profession who have displayed high professional, ethical, and personal development standards. Interested nurses and and wide are encouraged to fill out an application form and submit to the NAG at 4 Tiverland Park Road, Kingston. Retired U.S. soldier on armor charge allowed home for treatment. A retired member of the U.S. military who is facing charges of unauthorized possession of ammunition has been granted permission to leave Jamaica in order to get medical care. Christina Summon was reported to with ammunition at the Sanctus International Airport. She appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday and her defense hinges upon her assertion that she had made a mistake. Summon is being represented by attorney at law Henry McCurdy. According to court documents, the incident allegedly occurred on August 3rd, shortly after Summon arrived in the island on a jet blue flight from the United States. The allegations are that during screening search, an unusual object was detected on the scanner. A detailed search of her luggage was done and a magazine with 10 rounds of ammunition was found. When cautioned, someone allegedly said to the officer, the magazine and ammunition belonged to me and it was an honest mistake. I packed my bag in a hurry and did not realize it was in there. I was hurrying to catch my flight. She further indicated that she did not have a permit to carry a firearm in Jamaica but she is permitted to do so in this state where she resides. She also disclosed that she is a retired member of the U.S. military. Following the readings of the allegations, McCurdy stated that his client suffers from post-trauma stress disorder and asked that she be returned home for treatment. Miss Summon should have gone back home on Monday, August 5th, but because of this matter, she is still here, the defense lawyer stated. She spent the last two days in the Connor Regional Hospital, as she took sick and was rushed to the hospital. She needs to go back home for further medical examination and treatment, McCurdy told presiding judge Fairclough Hilton in making the application on someone's behalf. When persons go to other countries, 
like Miss Salman has done, and they get back to the United States and they are discharged with 100% disability because of the effects from what they went through. They have post-traumatic stress disorder. She suffers from the same condition, and the medication she needs is not in Jamaica, McCurdy explained. The judge was swept by the argument. While it would be somewhat easier for me to just deal with what is before me today, the truth is that based on the allegations as outlined by the prosecution, I would offer the prosecution some more time to deal with her instructions to see what is happening, she stated. If there is something else that needs to be done, I will not sacrifice what needs to be done on the basis of expediency. I have no difficulty with her returning for medical treatment, the judge added. She also commented on the number of cases involved contraband entering Jamaica. What I realized this week is that we always say that things come into our country and we must do more to protect our borders from them coming into the country, the judge noted. The ammunition case was subsequently set for mention on September 18 and someone's bill extended until then. Remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.